Welcome to the program, I'm Mark Imperial. This segment's being brought to you by booksgrowbusiness.com. It's the place where busy professionals get their books done to educate consumers, grow their practices, and to leave a legacy. I'm doing a series of spotlights on remarkable advisors from across the country. And joining me on this segment is Erin Dwyer. She's the founder of Mapmakers Financial out of Portland, Oregon. Erin, welcome to the program. Thank you, it's fun to be here. Erin, tell me a little bit about your work and specifically, who are the types of clients that you help? You know, the, the work that we do is all about developing plans for our clients to reach their financial goals. Everybody says that, but we actually do the calculations and we're interested in finding out not only what clients want uh, from their money, but also prioritizations about what matters most because sometimes there's not enough resources to get everything. And so we develop plans, basically maps, to get clients from point A to point B the most efficiently way that we can do. And the typical clients that we work with, it's so funny because, you know, when you first start in the business, it's anybody. Uh, but as I've developed this practice, I realize who I attract. And it's uh, analytics, it's women, it's strong women, it's moms and dads who travel the world. And usually, uh, you know, they're fairly wealthy. I have natural born savers. That's who I tend to attract. So it's a range of folks, but do these folks have sort of a commonality uh, or a common set of challenges or what's really uh, most important on their mind? What do you hear from them when they come out to reach, when they reach out to you? A lot of them say they have just been good savers and it's getting to a point where it's too complex for them to continue doing it on their own. So they might have uh, issues with figuring out their stock options or uh, their RSUs at work, knowing when to sell them, when, how to optimize those resources. Uh, they might have a business of their own that they're concerned about, making sure that they're taking care of their uh, employees or they just have a simple asset management issue. Like they don't know how to navigate allocating resources. When they reach out to you with these questions, do you find that any, any questions are sort of unintentionally misguided? Like they might've gotten information or, uh, or myths off the internet or something. What are some you know, of the biggest like myths or misconceptions you hear out there? Oh gosh, where do I begin? There's so many ways that I could go. Um, you know, I, I hear a lot of times people will have a preconception of thing, products like annuities or products like uh, cash value life insurance. And those products, while very complex, they evolve for a reason and that there's a place out there for them. They're not appropriate for everybody, but I can say that people come to me and they say, oh, I don't want one of those ever. And I ask them why. And they say, well, I just heard they're bad. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me why. So a little education goes a long way um, because like I said, they're not appropriate for everybody. Um, but that's one that I hear all the time. Yeah. It sounds uh, like people think that there's a, a one size fits all sort of solution and there's a right or a wrong, but it's just right or wrong for different people. Right. That's correct. So Aaron, how about this recent pandemic? Has this caused any shifts in the way that you advise people with their money or at least even in just in their mindset? Um, how has this pandemic affected your work? Oh, well, to begin, um, I had to send all my staff home, which that was not fun, but it's been effective in being able to service our clients still through. Um, the one thing I would say is whenever you hit a recession or um, like as we experienced at the beginning of this pandemic, people lost their jobs. And then what happens is they get really scared and they start to make phone calls to sell what they have in the market, which isn't the right answer. Um, so one thing that I see is that people don't tend to have enough cash. Um, they don't believe, especially in this low interest rate environment, that they need to have cash. Why not get it working harder for them? But the point of cash is not to get a yield on it. The point of cash is to protect their long-term investments. So I, I see that as a common mistake. And so now uh, 
we definitely talk to clients about keeping enough cash and what the, what does that mean to them? Right on. Aaron, what inspired you to get into financial services and to help others get their financial houses in order? How did you get started? You know, a long time ago, um, gosh, this seems like a lifetime ago, but I was a natural born saver. So I found myself researching and reading. And when I was looking for a career change, I just happened to look over at my nightstand and it was like a stack of books of personal finance, self-help books. And I thought, oh my gosh, I'm devouring this. There's something, there's something in there for me. So I started looking into the industry and realizing that there's pretty high barriers to entry, you know, with the licensing and what have you. And, uh, but that's what spurred me on. It just, I couldn't help myself. I love this stuff. It's extremely interesting. It changes all the time. So the minute you think you know something is the minute the law changes or the theory changes or something else. So you have to keep on your toes and it's just, it's not a boring job at all. <laughs> not to mention working with different people with different issues, with different um, interests. And oh, it's just, it's a fascinating career. Well, I'm glad to hear that you found a passion in something that's pretty darn complicated and changing all the time because that, that keeps you doing your best work and staying, uh, staying on top of everything. So speaking of that, Aaron, before I ask you my last question, um, if somebody really, you know, now that people are really inspired to get their financial houses in order, um, if folks aren't quite sure where to start, what's the most important thing they should look for in an advisor that they're considering working with? Oh, goodness. Um, you know, and I hate to, I hate to say that young advisors don't know what they're doing, but young advisors don't know what they're doing. Um, so look for somebody with some experience because I look back at what I was doing and I think, wow, I could have improved that. Uh, and so the more experience that you can have, the better, but also, um, you want somebody with some designations. And the specific designations I think are really valuable in a comprehensive financial planner are the certified financial planner or CFP designation. I think that one makes people stand out because the folks that have taken the time to get the CFP mark are pretty serious about the industry and about their careers. Now there are other designations that are excellent as well, but I would be looking for experience and the CFP designation and some kind of accolades from their company. Uh, of some level. And frankly, if they have some kind of rating from their clients, like a five star, four, you know, four star from their clients, that would also be a pretty good indicator as how clients are perceiving the service that they're getting. For folks listening that would love to speak with you, Aaron, how do they find you, connect with you, and learn more? So I do have a website, um, and my website can be found at ameriprizeadvisors.com slash aaron.l.dwyer. Uh, you can learn about me, my team, what we do, how we work. But usually somebody reaches out to me, whether they found me through the internet, which is very rare, by the way, or through a referral. And we schedule a complimentary consultation just to sit down and talk, find out that we're a good fit. I'm a good fit for them, but also they're a good fit for me. Terrific. Aaron, I really appreciate you taking the time to share with my audience today, and I wish it continued success for you and for all of your clients. Thank you. I really appreciate it. That was Aaron Dwyer. She's the founder of Mapmakers Financial out of Portland, Oregon. And this segment's been brought to you by BooksGrowBusiness.com. It's the place where busy professionals get their books done to educate consumers, grow their practices, and to leave a legacy. That's all for now. I'm Mark Imperial, and thanks for joining me.